as a field, neuroscience is starting to finally decode what goes on in this gray matter that we have, particularly in the cerebral cortex, which is the largest part of our brain. To be more specific, we're trying to figure out what is a thought, what happens in your brain when you think of something. Experiments with mice and other animals are starting to show that using neurotechnology, we can actually make the animal sort of change his mind and we can make the mouse see something that he's not seeing. Are we going to be able to read minds and change and predict behavior? Yes, it's a matter of time. This is not science fiction. What you can do in a mouse today, you could do in a human tomorrow. Let's just make sure that we maximize the benefit and we minimize the negative consequences. Until very recently with neuroscientists, we've been studying the brain one year at a time, but the human brain has 86 billion neurons. So to try to understand the brain one year at a time, it's like trying to watch a movie in a TV screen if you only look at one pixel. So you will never get it, even if you spend your whole life doing that. project developed technology to sequence genomes for a scientific and medical reason and that has revolutionized science and revolutionized medicine. We train the animal to see a screen and we record the activity of the cortex when he's looking at that and we can essentially decode what he's looking at by looking at the brain activity. And then in the second part of the experiment, we keep the animal in the dark, and then we go and activate with lasers particular neurons to elicit in the animal these visions of things that he had seen. The animal behaves as if he's seen these things. And we don't do this because we want to turn the mouse into a clockwork orange case, but because we're interested in understanding how the cortex works. So we're trying now to study uh, mice that have schizophrenia. Now we're trying to use our neurotechnology not to implant a thought or a vision into a mouse or a hallucination, no, no, but to try to cure the problem, try to fix this problem with these ensembles of neurons and see if we can actually change the behavior of the animal and make it more normal. No? Because if we could do this, then this could be one avenue for the psychiatrists of the future to try to deal, for example, with schizophrenia. You have to understand that there's two types of neurotechnology. There is ne neurotechnology that is invasive, which requires neurosurgery, and you can insert into the brain. And then there is neurotechnology that is non-invasive, that you can wear on top of your head, like a helmet, like this uh, headset, like glasses, a diadem. Invasive neurotechnology today is used effectively in the clinic to treat some uh, brain diseases. This is already happening, but this is happening within the umbrella of medicine. Maybe the future of psychiatry is not pharmaceuticals, but uh, electroceuticals. <laughs> so neurotechnology devices that can actually reprogram your brain in a schizophrenic and uh, recover the memories of Alzheimer's patients, for example, help with mental disability. I mean, all these terrible things. Now, if you think about Non-invasive neurotechnology, that's the one that uh, it's a bit more worrisome because it falls outside the umbrella of medicine. In fact, it is considered as uh, consumer electronics. And you can buy these things in Amazon as if you're buying an iPhone. You could think that the next cell phone is not going to be a little gadget on your pocket. It's going to be something wearable on your, your head. We should ensure that progress continues, but we have to do it within these ethical uh, guidelines.
neural rights are new human rights that protect brain activity from unintended uses of neurotechnology. What type of new human rights uh, are we advocating for? The right to our mental privacy, so that the contents of our brain activity is not decoded and deciphered without our consent. The right to our own mental identity, so that our own personality, our self, cannot be changed from the outside. The right to our own free will, so that we can make decisions based on our own internal brain activity, not based on the influence of the outside changing our brain activity directly, like we do with the mice. The Republic of Chile has changed its constitution and this amendment to the constitution protects cerebral activity and the information that comes from it as a basic human right. The US also is interested. We were asked to go visit the White House in November to debrief them on this issue. The brain is the definition of who you are, your thoughts, your memories, your imagination. Am I worried about the development of neurotechnology? I think 90% of what we have in the future is going to be positive, and we are working to prevent that 10% of negative consequences. Our approach is to start discussing now what's going to happen in the future and try to set the guidelines for the development and deployment of neurotechnology in a way which is in agreement with the type of human being that we want to be.